Today, let's break down the best Clan War League attack that you guys can use this month and how you can earn more three stars with the Zap Mass Witch. What's going on, my friends? My name's Corrupt, and today we're going to break down for you the best Town Hall 12 attack strategy that you can use during the Clan War Leagues. This is none other than the Zap Mass Witch. You guys already know how powerful this is. And we're going to be starting off with something that you guys have asked for in the past, which is going to be two single target infernos and a multi. If there are a majority single target infernos, how do I take care of a base design like this with witches? So there are a couple things that you're doing. For one, if you see one multi inferno, then you're going to be using the four lightning spells and one earthquake. If there are no uh, multis and there's just all singles, then don't bring lightning spells to begin with. Unless what you want to do is use them to create a little bit of a funnel, then go in for that because that is going to be much better than just getting rid of an inferno tower. You want to make sure that you're creating pathing for the rest of your attack. Now, along with this on what you're doing is, once you've gotten rid of that multi or that inferno for pathing purposes, you can then go ahead and start sending in your attack. You mainly want to try and go in for the Town Hall and the Ego Artillery, which are going to be two of your biggest things to get rid of. But along with that, you also want to make sure that you're able to drive into the base with some of the witches, maybe keep some of the flanking witches alive, but just mainly try to keep your heroes in the base so they can power through the Town Hall and through the Ego Artillery. So those are things that you really want to consider. But outside of that, you just want to make sure that you're sending in a couple witches with a golem on the left and some on the right as well, just in order to keep these witches alive for them to kind of move through the outside, clean up buildings, along with that, making sure that you're able to enter through. In this case, we've got the use of two super wall breakers, which is enough to break through multiple compartments. And we've also got the use of a jump spell that is going to allow us to get a, into a deeper part of the base, mainly to the Ego artillery with our heroes. So you always want to consider those small factors. Now, what we're going to start off with here first is the Zap Quake. Since there is a multi-target Inferno, we're going to use them. Now, here, we're separating them around other structures, mainly the Inferno, the Air Defense, and the Archer Towers, creating pathing. So now you'll see that we're going to drop in the, the Golem along with the Siege Barrack and a couple Witches. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, minus the Siege Barrack, of course. But that's just going to be used to create pathing purposes. And you don't always have to use the Siege Barrack. We're going to talk about how you guys can use other Siege Machines like the Log Launcher later on. But main thing here is that we're able to drive into the core of the base with some of the Witches. We've got flanking witch Witches on the left and the right as they continue to create the funnel. And as we push in to deal with the enemy clan castle troops, the town hall, and the ego artillery. So you'll see that we're going to drop in a rage spell on witches, which is normally something that you don't typically see. But with the spell composition that you're going to have with little to no zap quake, you can bring rage spells, heal spells, really anything. I would recommend heal if you're going to be using hog riders in a siege barrack, but you can see that how we're protecting the witches and we're protecting our heroes and troops for a lot longer as they push into the core as they go through. So you just want to make sure that what you're able to do is power through a large part of the base with your witches and make sure that you're able to really get a three star quickly. And that is the whole point of this. It was only like a two minute replay from this one. So it was a very, very fast attack. And that is the reason why witches are incredibly powerful. Take a look at all the troops that you have. You still have the king or the queen and the warden. You still have witches on the left. Some are still kind of in the core, but most are on the outside. And you've got Pekka and wizards still remaining. You've got a lot of troops left up standing. So... That, those are the things that you really want to consider if you are deciding on using the Zap Mass Witch. Now, this is not the only example that we have of this one. Let's also go over a different variation, including the Super Wizards. Now, this next variation I want to include because it is using the Super Wizards, but it's using them with the Witches. So you can use this as a Go Wee Wee. If you guys haven't seen my video on the Go Wee Wee attack, I would highly recommend checking that out after this video. It's an incredible strategy and it still works incredibly well. So what you're doing with this 
is you're going to use a couple witches with some super wizards on each side, like a traditional zap witches. But what you're also doing is you're going to be using the lightning spells in order to get rid of two multi-infernos, if there are any. Like in this case here, we can use that zap quake to get rid of both of these. Along with that, there is a single target inferno that we don't even need to touch or even worry about. Now, if you see two multi-infernos, or even two infernos in general, that are close together, but in the proximity of an earthquake, then you no longer need to bring eight lightning and two earthquake. You would still need to bring eight lightning, but you would only need to bring one earthquake instead of the usual two. So you have that option if you decide on doing so. And we'll watch an example of how you guys can do that later on. So what you're doing here is you're going to be using the log launcher. The main reason here is take a look at where the Eagle Artillery is and the Town Hall. We can use the log launcher to go directly, you know, directly across from the base and open up as many compartments. So you can see with the Zap Quake, very similar to what you saw in the first example, where we're using the Zap Quake in order to get rid of the Multi Inferno, we're using this in order for pathing along with getting rid of splash so you want to make sure that you're getting rid of other defenses not just the main one so what you're going to do is you're going to create the funnel with your super wizards and also with some of the witches and once you've been able to do that you can send in the rest of your super wizards along with your heroes into the base the log launcher is an incredibly viable and very very valuable siege because if you take a look at it it may not look like it's doing too much, but you see how it is completely tearing through these smaller clan castle troops, knocking down practically that entire clan castle, since it was all straight in a line. And along with that, take a look at how many defenses and how many walls it is getting rid of. It just allows all these units to power into the town hall compartment without having to use a jump spell at all. And you've got the use of the super wizard still left up standing from the warren ability since you want to use that right over the town hall. And you can just see how quickly you can crush through a base even with the super wizards. And that really just goes to show Go Wee Wee is extremely strong and it's really nice that it has been brought back into the meta thanks to the super wizards. And it's definitely worth noting that this attack strategy you can use against single target infernos too. So just keep that in mind. You may want to use a good mixture of witches and also wizards. But in this case, using a couple more super wizards allowed him to get through a large part of the base and the core and just made it even easier. So that gives you another option if you guys want to use witches, but you don't want to use all witches. You could add the super wizards included in that. Now that is an example of how you guys can add that variation. Let's also go over how you guys can use the traditional zap mass witch with the log launcher, but also using one earthquake. Next up, we want to go over how you guys can use the nine lightning spells and one earthquake in order to get rid of inferno towers that are fairly, fairly close together, like in this case here. Since we can use the one earthquake right here, you can really reach all of these buildings. You can reach the multi-infernos, you can get rid of the expos, which may not seem like a lot, but you're able to get rid of a good area of the base here, making it easier for pathing purposes. And what you want to make sure that you're doing is you're able to send in your log launcher so you're able to get across the way so you can get rid of the eagle artillery which is going to be your main threat if there's another multi inferno you want to try and open up those compartments so your queen and other ranged units can get in there and also making sure that your heroes move into the base pretty simple stuff all the way around so now what we want to take a look at first is just the zap quake and i want you guys to really see what he does I want you to see what the attacker does here in order to make sure that this zap quake goes smoothly. So he's going to use that one earthquake spell right in the middle of all of these defensive structures. Then he's going to be using four lightning between a couple of defensive structures. And he's also going to use it between the other ones and make sure that he's also able to get rid of a larger amount of structures leaving this one last lightning spell that he's going to use on the Warden Altar, which doesn't really mean too much, but it does weaken up those buildings slightly. So now what he's going to do is he's going to drop in some witches on the left side, 
some over in the core with this with this ice golem gonna be doing the same thing over on this right side at six o'clock making it just a little bit e easier so it is a wider funnel than most however you are using the log launcher in order to power through so using it here at six o'clock to make it a little bit easier to power through with the heroes so that's exactly why we're dropping in the king queen and the warden right next to it so that way we can start sending everything in and you can see with the logs is that they're going to be able to take care of other structures including the heroes so the queen will start taking damage from that log launcher and even poisoning her up as well the king will be able to get rid of her and along with that making sure he's able to open up a larger amount of the base is incredibly viable here along with that you've got the use of yetis that you can use to power through a larger part of the base Mainly, you want to make sure that what you're able to do is get your heroes into the core of the base, getting rid of stuff like the Town Hall, the Multi Inferno, like you see right here. The King's going to be able to work himself right in using the King ability in order to power through. Queen was able to get rid of the Multi Inferno, and that's really how easy this is. It was a little bit of a wider funnel, wider than most of the Zap Witches that you're going to typically use. But it just, just goes to show that it is still extremely strong, ex extremely powerful, and still worth using. So if I were you, I would highly recommend using the one Earthquake if you notice that you can encompass both Inferno Towers that you want to get rid of, or even all three if all three Infernos are fairly close together. Now that really sums up this variation, but let's give you more examples of using the Zap Mass Witch here in 2021. In this next example, we have all three of the key buildings in a line, and you're going to see why this is incredibly powerful to really take advantage of. So remember that we're using the Zap Quake, we want to use it over multiple structures. So what we're trying to do with pathing is we want to make sure that we're getting something that looks kind of like this. That way, what we're able to do is send in the log launcher through the base to give us access all across the entire base from this middle compartment. And that's just going to allow us to use the uh, use witches on either side here and making that funnel and getting through the rest of the base. So you have a lot of options if you're planning on using witches here at Town Hall 12. So for starters, you want to use the Zap Quake over two multi infernos like we've mentioned throughout the entire thing but just make sure that you're also getting rid of other structures in those compartments like an altar or other defensive structures in there you want to make it easier for the rest of your attack just so that then you're able to use the witches by creating the funnel on both the left and the right side like we talked about through the entire video making it easier this one is my personal go-to using the two golems and two ice golems the ice golems just tank just enough and you're given the uh, the freeze effect after they after they die which is incredibly valuable and you can see that it really will help the log the log launcher as you start to move in you want to try and preserve as much of its health as you can so having a tank in front is incredibly useful and along with that you also want to make sure that you're able to power through and use the ability in order to protect it protect its health and make sure that it's able to open up as many compartments as necessary and it can also really provide a lot of support when clean up cleaning up smaller troops from the clan castle or even skeleton traps so you always want to try and consider those things but you can still see from here is, is how easy this attack strategy is i know i'm saying easy a lot through this video but it really is that easy i mean you've got the use of witches on one side same on the other and you even got some going through the core of the base you've got a lot that you have to your arsenal to use the zap witches now this is not the only example that we have we're going to give you guys another example as well but this just goes to show how powerful it is and showing all these examples to you guys just shows how strong it is so i will recommend if you decide on using this i would highly recommend it it's really easy to use and you can use this during the clan war leagues to where you're going to be able to get three stars really really quickly 
So that is just another example using this. Let's give you guys one last example with going up against one single and two multis. This final example, I want you guys to really take a look at the base and really learn from everything that you learned through the, throughout this entire video. What I want you guys to really understand is if you're dealing with single target infernos, and of course you have two multi infernos that you can zap quake, make sure that you're going in for other structures, not just the inferno. But then if you're using the log launcher, you can use that in order to open multiple compartments, even compartments behind the Talon Hall. So that is the reason to why the Log Launcher is actually much more valuable than a Wall Wrecker, which is why you didn't see it at all here in this video. The Log Launcher is just a better Wall Wrecker for these type of spam and also Sui Hero based attacks. So you want to make sure that you're able to do just that. And there isn't too much that you really need to do, especially if you're going into a corner. You can use two ice golems, the log launcher, a couple golems right behind, the witches kind of spreading across here and making it just a little bit easier to move everything in. And you can see with the log launcher, we're going to be able to get rid of the single target inferno. And we're also going to be able to open up compartments from behind that town hall. Along with that, using the Zap Quake in order to get rid of multiple structures. Like, for instance, we were able to get rid of one of the Infernos, but we're going to be using the Warn ability included in order to get through. And you can see that we've also got the use of the other Zap Quake. A little bit more delayed, but still enough to get through. And the final thing that you really need to get rid of is going to be the Eager Artillery. Once that goes down, there really isn't too much that's going to stop this push. I mean, you've got a lot of troops at your disposal that you're going to be able to use to crush through a large part of the base. You've still got witches on or in the core of the base driving through, and you've got some on the flanks, making it easier for them to push through. The only downside is going to be the wizard towers. They could do an incredible amount of damage. And in terms of dealing with the enemy clan castle troops, if it's going to be something like a super minion CC, just use the poison spell on them. As long as they stay in that poison spell for longer, that's going to be an instant KO. So you want to make sure that you're waiting on that poison so you can keep them in that poison spell for longer. But that really sums up exactly what you're doing here. As a Town Hall 12, during the Clan War Leagues, this is going to be an incredibly easy attack strategy that you can use. And I would definitely say that I would be using this during the Clan War Leagues. It's pretty much almost an instant 3-star, unless of course something does go wrong, like a bunch of your witches get taken down, and you don't need to get them all to go into the core of the base, like I've said in the past. It's really, really simple, it doesn't take too long to really understand this, and it works really well against compact and open bases. So hopefully you guys did enjoy, hopefully you guys took something away from this let me know in the comments below what you guys think is the best clan war league attack do you guys think it's this one let me know let me also feel free guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell for more educational content like this here at town hall 12 make sure you guys also go ahead and follow me over on the social and use code corruptyt in the clash champ shop to save 10 percent off your purchase other than that though guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed it. i'll be seeing you in the next video corrupt Signing out.